Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Chevron Edwards and today I will be teaching you how to do a frottage. Now a frottage is simply a picture made up of textures. Alright? Now how do you get these textures? You color the picture on different surfaces. So it's basically you placing the picture over a surface, a textured surface. Textures can be rough, smooth or soft, whatever surface you choose. And you rub on the surface so that you pick up the pattern that the surface has now this is what I will be showing you how to do today now you might not want to take on this one but it's the same principles apply to whichever picture that you're going to use so for example you're going to color a dog you're going to color a flowers or a garden the same principles apply all right so here's a closer look we're going to be using different textures from around the home because we're in quarantine right so we're gonna use different textures from around the home to create this here so what am I gonna use I'm gonna use my plate cover one of my dishes my mom bought me this dish based on my frying pan my meat board just about everything in the house that has textures on it my garbage bin Speaker. All right. So, once it has texture on it, I'm gonna use it because you want to pick up all of those patterns. So, what you need for this exercise are your textures and your pencil crayon. Now, I always recommend Crayola crayons because they are brighter, vibrant, and they're not so heavy on the pocket. Prisma colors are excellent, but I'm not gonna buy Prisma colors. But if you have that, I will be fine. All right. So. I don't recommend wax crayons for this because wax crayons don't tend to pick up the surfaces that well so I really recommend that you use your pencil crayons all right other than that you know you're gonna need your cartridge paper and let's get started now firstly we lay down our picture on the surface that would like the color on now for me I'm going to be doing my background first so I need a surface that is wide enough to cover my background for this i'm going to be using my speaker now if you don't have a speaker this size or anything of this size a good surface you can normally use for a background is your wall or the floor or a tile or something that is wide enough to cover all of the sections of the picture now you want something that's interesting yet big enough so don't try to limit yourself to just small objects. Try to use various patterns. And you can find a lot of patterns around your house. You can find shoes, you can find tiles, you can even find some plates and some pots with some very interesting patterns on it. All right? So try to explore. If you need to get outside, go outside and look around. You can even use an old sheet of cardboard, strip the cardboard and get that little middle section with the different textured area right there and it can make a good good background texture all right so let's get started i will start by using my blue crayons i'm going to use different shades of blue because i don't want my picture to just look flat and boring all right always try to use variations for your pictures all right let's get started okay so i'm going to start with my dark blue first and i'm going to be starting at the ocean floor now the reason why I did this is because the ocean floor is generally the darkest part of the ocean and that's because the least amount of light reaches that section 
and the closer you get to the top the more light is in the water because the surface is a lot closer to the sun than the base so it's simple logic so whenever you're doing your art pieces always try to include logic in it because we want our pieces to be realistic and to make sense so for that reason you will see me transitioning from my dark blue to my lighter blue crayons all right and wherever those blue crayons overlap you will find a nice nice beautiful transition coming up between the textures we have to be careful you have to hold the area firm down to prevent it from shifting because once it starts to shift the pattern will be spoiled because you find the pattern start overlapping with each other and that is why you see my hand holding down the picture at all times because i need it to remain in the same position so as to not to spoil the pattern all right, so while you're transitioning between your crayons, try to keep your surface affixed. All right. So now that you have an idea of how I'll be coloring this section, I'm going to time lapse the remaining portion for the background so that you can get to see the entire process unfold in a short time. All right, let's go. Now that I've completed the background, the next step is to move to the main feature of the picture. All right. Now for the turtle, I want the shells to have very interesting patterns and a variety of textures coming out on the back of the turtle shell. So I'm going to be starting off with a pot and then moving to different objects I find around my kitchen. All right. Now you might have different textures around your house. Have fun with it. Enjoy it. And you might be able to pick up something from even outside. There's no problem with that. Just ensure that you use variety in your picture. And another thing that will make it interesting is not just a variety of colors, but also a variety of textures. And that is the reason for the shell. I will be using a number of textured surfaces. Well, I'll be starting off with a pot. And I want you to pay close attention because once you start coloring, you cannot shift the surface you cannot shift the paper because once any of those shift you're going to have a pattern shift and if you have a pattern shift it's going to start overlapping with each other and you're not going to get that neat uniformed look that we want all right so 
please pay close attention to that. Even if you're transitioning from color to color, ensure that you keep the paper affixed to the surface. All right. Do not shift it. Do not remove it until you are done. All right. Let's get started. All right, so now I will be switching to my flat surface for the smaller areas because what happens is that whenever you're working in small spaces, if you try to color it on a textured surface, you won't really see the texture showing. So it doesn't really make sense if you're not gonna pick up the texture. So I just use a smooth surface. And remember smooth is a texture as well. So for this section, I will be just using the flat surfaces get those details in and to make it look nice and realistic all right let's continue
So now that we've completed our turtle, we're going to shift to the ocean floor. Now the ocean floor has corals, seaweed and some other rocks and items down there. So we're going to try to use as many textures down there as possible. Now for this section, I'm going to be using a variety of colors as well because I want some life down there. And whatever I can get my hands on that has textures, I'm going to be using even my garbage bin. So. Let's get started. Oh, and I will be slowing back the video down so you can see what's happening with each of these textures.
Alright, so here's our completed footage. I tried to use as much textures as I possibly could. I like to think of footage as a scavenger hunt. That makes it really fun for me. I don't know what I can find out, I don't know what I will pick up. And I just try to enjoy the exercise. It can be really fun for kids too, especially when they are in an environment that they are not familiar with and they get a chance to explore and just collect different things. And the photage will be like a representation of what they have collected. So it's a great exercise. Now that's basically it. Thank you guys for watching. I just taught you how to do a frottage and I'm sure you're gonna explore that technique a lot more now. It's pretty fun. It can be very engaging if you're gonna teach it in a lesson because it gets the children excited. You know, you can use the bottom of your shoes, you can use a chair, just about everything in your environment to create the frottage. Alright, till next time, all the best. Bye.